Hello, my name is Christine Zorowski and I'm the Sexual Health Clinician for the Prostate Cancer Supportive Care Program. And today I would like to talk to you about intimacy tips for prostate cancer survivors. Before I move forward with that, I'd like to talk about um, the funders and donators that we've had for our program. Funding initially came from this um, Specialist Services Committee and that in January 2013 they gave us our initial money to start our program. And then in March of 2017, the BC Ministry of Health actually provided additional funding so that we could expand our program provincially. I also want to acknowledge the different uh, private donations that we received from groups and individuals because without those donations, without that funding, we would not have the Prostate Cancer Supportive Care Program. And if we don't have the program, we can't be here to support you. So intimacy, when I think about intimacy, a lot of people have different types of ideas about what that means. And so I thought I'd put together a couple different statements just to clarify what intimacy can mean. So it can be considered a level of familiarity possible only in certain relationships. It's based on trust, unconditional love, and acceptance. We also see it can mean a disclosure of feelings and information that results in feeling cared for, understood, and validated, and most important, accepted. It's a sharing of identity, mutual acceptance, emotional closeness, and reciprocated rapport more closely linked to communication rather than sexual function. So in essence, intimacy is an affectionate or loving personal relationship with another person. You know, there's many different types of intimacy. And recently, I actually did a workshop where we identified over 41 intimacies that a couple can actually have. You know, things like intimacy around food, art, music, travel, books. For today's presentation, I wanted to talk about four primary intimacies that we see a lot in our relationships with people that we're working with. One of the, one of the intimacies is intellectual intimacy. So this is actually the sharing of different values or ideas. We also have experiential intimacy. So these are the different types of activities that you enjoy doing with your partner. Then we have emotional intimacy characterized by shared feelings, trust, and vulnerability. And then we have sexual intimacy here. And that is the sensual and sexual expression that you have with another person. In this particular slide, you kind of see all those intimacy bubbles equal and interrelated. What I find is that sometimes certain intimacies have more relevancy for some individuals or couples versus other intimacies. So I also find as individuals going through um, this prostate cancer journey, again, some of those bubbles might be a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger. So again, it's important, what is important for that couple at that time. Why do we see changes in intimacy after prostate cancer treatment? Well, a couple of reasons are as follows. Altered sexual self-view as a result of how your mind and body function sexually, leading to decreased sexual confidence and possibly some avoidance behavior. There could be a decrease or loss of sexual drive or desire. There could be interfering factors like pain, fatigue, anxiety, or stress. And then there's also the challenges with being able to talk about the sexual consequences resulting from the prostate cancer treatment. You know, whether you've been together for decades or you're starting a new relationship, it can be challenging to talk about sex with your partner, right? When there are changes about how you feel and function sexually, it is important to understand how this impacts you. This is a first step towards coping and then allowing you to move forward and reestablishing and enhancing your intimacy. So what are some things that are helpful? Well, practice saying those words like sex or penis, orgasm, ejaculation, penetration, romance, any of those things. The more you say those words, the easier it becomes. Make sure you express your needs from a personal perspective, and this will help put your partner at ease. So using I statements versus you statements. Right? So an example is, I find I feel more relaxed and ready when we plan a time to be sexual. Or another example might be, you know, I miss how you used to hold me when we watched a romantic movie. Be clear, honest, and open about your desires, your likes, and your dislikes. The last time I checked, mind reading had not been perfected. So it's, again, it's important to talk about it. Pay attention to your partner's responses. You know, look at the body language and take your partner's feelings into consideration. Clarify understanding. Right? You can paraphrase what you thought you heard. 
And of course, always it's important to ask questions. You know, and of course, acknowledge your partner's views matter to you. You know, having that connection, feeling important, being supported, being heard is essential for moving forward. So how can we enhance intimacy? How do you begin? Well, first of all, give yourself permission to look at your intimacy, right? Think about uh, remaining positive and open-minded, and also talk about the sexual consequences and how they make you feel. You know, not just for the man who's had prostate cancer treatment, but also for the partner as well. Learn about each other's sexual desires and responses, right? And of course, discuss other ways of being sexual. Things like mutual masturbation, or changing the style of how you make love, maybe incorporating some tantric techniques, or even exploring erotica together. Take the time and make dedicated time. We know life gets super busy and it's very easy to let time pass, right? The other thing that might be helpful is actually create a, pa a passion plan. Pleasure focused versus goal directed. This is actually a really important point because one of the things, as soon as you set up goals when you're being sexual, like, you know, have orgasm, have penetration, have erection, when you have those kind of goals, it actually can spur a lot of anxiety around sexual performance. So take off that pressure of those goals and allow yourself to enjoy the pleasure of that sexual journey. Of course, use all your senses to enjoy sensuality and create a comfortable sexual environment or make it even tantalizing. Okay? And have more physical contact during non-sexual times, right? Hand holding, caressing, massaging. Try that 30 second daily hug. Other things that we find helpful is focus on what each of you likes best sexually, right? Enhance that emotional connection before, during, and after sex. Make that sexual experience more than just a physical event. You know, be more active during sex to help maintain that, that interest. And then, of course, if there are sexual desire discrepancies, talk together about that. Sometimes actually having a counselor to facilitate that conversation is helpful. It's very common to have those discrepancies, so it, it, they can be managed for sure. Manage the factors that might interfere with intimacy, such as that pain, that fatigue, anxiety, or stress. And then something to actually help with that sexual drive or sexual desire is recalling positive erotic experiences that bring, and bring that energy back to their current sexual experiences. Then of course remember that sexual satisfaction is possible without an erection. Right? and create the type of intimacy that you desire. You know, re-establishing intimacy after prostate cancer requires honest communication about each person's needs and desires. The prostate cancer experience can be challenging on many levels, but it also creates opportunities to redesign your intimacy and your sexual life. Through their efforts, many individuals actually feel closer and feel their dimensions of intimacy have improved. So again, our team members here at the Prostate Cancer Support Care Program are here to support you as you move towards enhancing your intimacy. Thank you.